Hello there and welcome to another sample question for MostStronglySupported.com. This question is going to teach you the sufficient assumption strategy for sufficient questions on the LSAT and the logical reasoning section. And as always, we're going to use an example from real life, but we're going to change the names around a little bit. But see if you can follow along. This one's about Lisa Logan and the shoplifted necklace. So in logical reasoning, when you have a prompt that talks about assumptions, and there's a couple of different assumption questions, but here's what you're looking for. Our prompt says, Dr. Drew's conclusion follows logically if which one of the following is assumed. So basically it's asking us if we assume one of the answer choices, we're gonna get a perfectly logical or valid conclusion. Anytime you see a prompt like that, you know you're dealing with a sufficient question. And we're looking for a sufficient assumption. A sufficient assumption is something really strong, meaning if we plug that assumption in, it's sufficient enough to draw the conclusion. All right, so let's read our stimulus. Here's Dr. Drew. Someone with great financial means will shoplift only if they're deeply troubled or if they intentionally committed the crime to get publicity. Then we're told if someone's deeply troubled, then their parents have failed. Ouch. Then here's our girl, Lisa Logan. She's a well-known actress, ex-child star. She was recently called shoplifting, and she didn't know that she was doing anything illegal, thinking the store owners would like it if she shoplifted. So the conclusion of this argument is that her parents have failed. Now, oftentimes in sufficient questions, you get conditional statements that you can diagram, and that's what we have here. We have two conditional statements in this stimulus, so let's start with that first one. If you have great financial means and you shoplift, that happens only if, and remember, only if always introduces a necessary condition. That'll happen only if you're deeply troubled or if you did it on purpose to get attention. Okay, the next thing we know is that if someone's deeply troubled, then their parents have failed. Ooh, those looks like some failure parents to me. And let's remember our conclusion in this argument. The conclusion here is that Lisa's parents have failed. Now, because the argument tells us we need an assumption here, we know there's something missing in this argument. So we got to figure out what that is. But let's think about first what we know about Lisa Logan. So we know Lisa Logan shoplifted. That's for sure. We also know that she didn't know she was doing anything illegal. So it can't be that she intentionally did it to get publicity because she didn't really think it was a crime at all. So that doesn't happen here. So here's what we have. Lisa Logan shoplifted. She didn't do it on purpose. And then this argument draws the conclusion that her parents failed. Now, if you look at what we have in our conditional statements, we're really close to getting that conclusion. We're just missing one little piece. What are we missing? Well, what if we knew that Lisa had financial means, great financial means? If we knew that was true, then look at our argument. We have someone who has great financial means and they shoplifted. That leads us to knowing that they're deeply troubled because Lisa Logan didn't intentionally steal it. Then we know that if someone's deeply troubled, then their parents failed. And then we could draw that conclusion that her parents failed. So let's look for that in the answer choices. If you take a look at answer choice C, that's exactly what it says. It says Lisa Logan has great financial means. That assumption, when plugged into the argument, completely val validly draws the conclusion that Lisa's parents have failed. I know, it's unfortunate. I'm shedding a tear right now. No one wants to think about this Lisa Logan in that way. And remember, Lisa Logan, fictional character, but based on a real life person. But anyway, regardless of what the conclusion is or anything like that, remember the LSAT's all about logic and we have just fixed the logic in this argument by finding an assumption that fixes the whole thing. Taking a look at the other answer choices, answer choice A says Lisa's parents could have done a better job as parents. Well, sure, but if we plug that into the argument, of course, it doesn't draw the conclusion that our parents failed. Answer choice B says the store owners were not honored when Lisa told, took the necklace. Well, again, in real life, could be true. Maybe when someone shoplifts a necklace, even if they're a celebrity, the store owners kind of want you to pay for it. But, of course, when we plug that into the, answer uh, into the argument, it doesn't draw the conclusion that Lisa Logan's parents failed. And remember, we're looking for that assumption that completely and follow logically draws the conclusion that Lisa Logan's parents failed. Answer D says Lisa is not culpable for her theft. Well, that's definitely something we can't plug in there. We don't know that, and we don't care if she's culpable or not. In fact, if we said she's not culpable for a theft, then we might say her parents didn't fail. Maybe her parents succeeded because their parents raised a child who could just take a necklace from a store and just walk out with it and not be culpable for it. That's the kid I would want to raise, right? But nonetheless, answer choice D doesn't work here. And last but not least, answer choice E says, no movie studios are going to be contacting Lisa anytime soon. 
Well, that doesn't really matter either way. That's not an assumption we need here. Again, just because movie studios won't be contacting Lisa doesn't necessarily mean that her parents failed. It might mean that, but it doesn't automatically mean that. And remember, we need, a conclu we need an assumption in there that gets the conclusion 100% logically. So E doesn't work for us. We're going to stick with C as the answer choice for this assumption. Hopefully that gets you a little bit of a head start and a little bit of an idea of how to solve these sufficient assumption questions. Remember, you're looking for the assumption that makes the whole argument work. All right, that's it for today. Good luck out there in LSAT land. And remember to go to moststrongly supported.com and blueprintprep.com for all of your LSAT needs.